Hello and welcome to this video about historical improvisation. Historical improvisation is the art of inventing on the spot without previous composition music in historical styles such as in the Baroque or the Classic or the Romantic. Now this takes quite a bit of musical study and preparation to be able to do it and I'm going to demonstrate one of the first skills that we require of students who want to improvise. This skill is known as rule of the octave or regola dell'ottava and it consists of a scale in the bass and each note of the bass scale ascending and descending has its own harmony, its own set of upper notes that accompany it. So to understand these chords, you have to understand intervals of various numerical values. For example, what we would normally call a triad is referred to as a 5-3 chord because it contains a fifth and a third. If I move the top note up, it's now a sixth and the chord maintains a third. So this is known as a 6-3 chord. So 5-3 and 6-3 are the two main types of chords that we'll use. However, there are others that we will encounter along the way. So let's take a look at rule of the octave. We start on the first scale degree and this will take a 5-3 chord. Now, interestingly, I can play the 5-3 chord here or here. And these are known as the positions of the chord. First position is with the G and the top, second position B, third position D. Now I have to choose one of these, so just for sake of choosing, I will start with second position. And it's still known as a 5-3 chord. So there's our first thing we have to learn. As we go up to scale degree 2, I take a third, which is here, I take a sixth, which is here, and I take a fourth. So this has a sixth, a fourth, and a third. It's known as a six, four, three. So let's hear these two together. And as I go to the third note of the scale, I will take a six, three chord. So I'm playing it with this melody but I could also do and musically speaking those are all the same thing so we've got the first three now we'll go to scale degree four in the bass and scale degree four is going to take a third and a fifth and a sixth. So we call this a six, five, three. Let's hear them all in order. And as I get to scale degree five, I take a simple three, five chord. As I get to scale degree six, I take a six, three chord. We're almost there. Scale degree seven takes a six, five, three. And finally, we're back to scale degree one, and we take a fifth and a third. Let's hear the whole thing ascending in G major. So we're done ascending. Now we have to go back down, but the chords change a little bit on the way down. They're not exactly the same. Starting here, of course, the fifth and the third. On the way down, six, three, not six, five, three. A slight difference, but an important difference. And now scale degree six on the way down is quite different. It takes a third and a sharp sixth. So I have to change the G major scale and add a C sharp. Let's hear those. And now 
a 5-3 chord on scale degree 5. Here comes another change. Scale degree 4 going down takes a 2nd, a 4th, and a 6th. 6-4-2. Six, okay, very different on the way up. We had a 6-5-3 on the way down. The very distinct sound of the 6-4-2. Well, most 6-4-2s resolve downward to 6-3s. So on scale degree 3, we have the same harmony we had going up. Likewise, scale degree 2, the same harmony, 6-4-3. And finally at the end, 5-3. Let's hear the entire major rule of the octave, ascending and descending. Okay, now, I can already make a lot of music with rule of the octave so far. For example, one of the things that is truly enjoyable to do is to break up the notes of each chord into what we call figurations. So instead of playing everything together, I can break them apart. And I'm going to play each one twice because it sounds good. So. Scale degree two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, downward, seven, six, there's your C sharp. So that's major rule of the octave. We have one for minor as well. It's similar, but with some important differences. Let's learn this in G minor. We begin again with a 5-3, but of course now with flats in the key of G minor. Scale degree two is the same as major. Six, four, three. Likewise, Scale degree three takes chord of the sixth. Scale degree four is going to take the six, five, three, but with the important flat, not this, but this. Again, identically, scale degree five takes a third and a fifth. Now something surprising is going to happen. I'm not going to play the E flat on scale degree six. I'm going to raise scale degree six. And now scale degree seven will take six, five, three. And then five, three at the top. Let's hear the entire thing ascending. So the reason the scale is changed on the way up is because we don't want that interval is considered awkward in this era of music. It's known as an augmented second, and they tried to avoid it as often as possible. Uh, the original idea was it was difficult to sing, uh, but eventually it just became considered poor taste. So instead of this, we do this, and I hope you can hear that it is more smooth. Now we're going to go down, and remember on the way up we raised scale degree 6 and scale degree 7, so we have a sharp leading tone. 
on the way down, we lower them both. There it is. Flat seven, taking a chord of the sixth. Now we're going to have E flat as well. And on E flat, there is more than one solution. Some can go chord of the sixth, but some like to do this. And it takes a third and a sharp sixth. Compare the two and decide which one you find more interesting. First option, second option. And I can even change that one a little bit more. Yikes. Okay. And one more option. With a suspension. The rest of the way down is the same as what we've seen previously on scale degree four. The 642, the mighty 642. 63. 643. Let us hear the entire minor rule of the octave ascending and descending. Now the question becomes, what is this for? And the answer is to play improvisation and indeed also to compose. Uh, one must have a vocabulary of harmony. One must know things you can say harmonically. Like if you want to have a conversation with your friends, you must know a language. Uh, if, if you don't share a language with your friends, you can't say what you had for lunch and what it was like to go to the museum today and the music you like to listen to, all of those discussions require a vocabulary. And every musician needs a, a harmonic vocabulary. Rule of the octave is the first and simplest vocabulary. And in the 18th century in Italy, it was taught to young children, as young as six or seven years old. They would sit at the harpsichord and they would practice this over and over again until they had it memorized. And they knew how to do it in lots of different keys, not just G, but many other keys. And this became their, what I call their default language of simple things you can say. So I am American, I'm not Italian, and so I need simple things I can say. Dove toilet, per favore, mi scusi, ah, accidente, possiamo siderci qui, il severamento vietate toccare il pianoforte. I need to know a few things I can say, even though I don't speak proper Italian. I can get around the street, and I can go to the restaurant, and I can get a taxi, and I can get a hotel room. So it's a survival language for me. Likewise, rule of the octave is a simple survival language for beginning musicians. And it's actually quite surprising how many things you can play if you only know rule of the octave. For example, one does not need to play the scale ascending and descending. For example, one can play it out of order. There, I played not stepwise, but I jumped by thirds and still used the appropriate chords for each scale degree. And you hear it actually sounds It still sounds correct and proper. So the purpose of Rule of the Octave was to give young musicians a working survival vocabulary of correct music. 
And really, it's quite surprising how much music is written only in rule of the octave. There's even a Chopin waltz, the E minor waltz, opus posthumus, where an entire section is really nothing but rule of the octave, in the music of Chopin, if you can imagine. Likewise, the violin virtuoso, Sarasate. I was at a concert one time in Lithuania, and the students were performing in the concert hall, very difficult virtuoso music of Sarasate. I was in the back row, and I started laughing, my shoulders bouncing up and down, because I realized underneath all this incredible violin playing, the accompaniment was only rule of the octave, the same thing they taught to little children. Uh, so it does appear in real music. It is used by actual composers. So everyone that I teach improvisation, the first thing they learn is to play rule of the octave, major, minor, ascending, and descending in several keys, at least up to three sharps and three flats, but preferably all 24 keys, because this becomes the foundation of one's improvisation skills.